The wall of silence has now been broken, and victims are coming forward. Hold on to your tea, y'all, because we're diving into a story that's shaking up the entertainment world like a Texas tornado. So picture this. Texas lawyer Tony Busby comes out swinging, promising over 100 lawsuits aimed straight at none other than Sean Diddy Combs. And folks, he's not just talking the talk, he's kicking things off. Just this Monday, Busby filed several complaints on behalf of IA, six alleged victims, who claimed they were wronged by Diddy. One heartbreaking tale even recounts a victim who says he was just more than 16 when he was groped during one of Diddy's notorious white parties. Buckle up, this ride is about to get bumpy. While Diddy, a 54-year-old music mogul, cools his heels in a Brooklyn jail facing all federal sex crime charges, folks from all over the country are buzzing. They're reaching out to Busby, eager to air their grievances against the hip-hop heavyweight. Earlier this month, Busby spilled the tea, revealing that his firm received thousands of phone calls, detailing stories of sexual assault and mistreatment. They've waded through the chaos and decided to take on Kai, more than 100 cases, to civil court. That's a full courtroom, my friends. In a press conference that felt more like a blockbuster movie premiere, Busby laid it all out. He emphasized that Diddy's alleged victim pool is massive, covering various washed ages, genders, races, and locations. And you believe it? They have 20, 60 males and 60 females in this group, with victims hailing from over 25 states. The majority are from California, New York, Georgia, and Florida. And brace yourselves, the youngest alleged victim, a chilling nine years old. That's right. 25 out of 120 plaintiffs were minors when they reportedly encountered the infamous Diddy. Most of these alleged assaults went down at parties. Think after parties, album release shindigs, New Year's Eve bashes, and even something called a puppy party. No idea what that entails, but I'm curious. Young hopefuls trying to break into the industry often found themselves coerced into these creepy scenarios, all under the guise of, hey, if you want to be a star, you got to do what it takes. But back to the main act, Diddy. This guy has been a heavyweight in the music industry for ages, known for his Grammy-winning tunes and bad boy entertainment label. But nowadays, when his name pops up, it's like a dark cloud follows. He's now more notorious for being an osh indicted defendant than a chart-topping producer. Charges include racketeering, conspiracy, sex trafficking, and all sorts of unsavory allegations. Prosecutors claim he used his power and wealth to coerce women and even employees into participating in these creepy freak-offs, which were reportedly filmed without consent. The scandal runs deep. But here's the kicker. It's not just the prosecutors painting Diddy as the bad guy. He's been tangled up in civil lawsuits for a hot minute now, including one from his ex-girlfriend, Cassandra Ventura, who claimed he forced her into some of those infamous freak-offs. It's like a never-ending soap opera, and Diddy is the leading man, if you can call it that. Now, during Busby's latest presser, he told the world to expect those Omailu 100 lawsuits to start flooding in. And guess what? The first six hit the court faster than a New York minute. The lawsuits allege all kinds of juicy details, including aggravated sexual assault, sexual abuse, and exploitation, stretching back as far as, oh, 1995. Talk about a long history of alleged misdeeds. The complaints are making waves, with claims that Diddy's white parties were a hotbed for dubious activities. One lawsuit focuses on a now-grown man who was only 16 at the time of the alleged assault, identified as John Doe. So let's break it down. This lawsuit isn't just about cash. It's seeking both compensatory and punitive damages for the harm suffered by the victim. Compensatory damages are like a financial band-aid, while punitive damages are meant to give Diddy a serious slap on the wrist for his alleged behavior. The suit describes a shocking incident during one of Diddy's legendary white parties in 1998, where the young man claims he was groped. Can you imagine the scene? A 16-year-old kid, starry-eyed and dreaming of stardom, runs into Diddy himself, only to be pushed into a terrifying situation. The lawsuit details how Diddy allegedly instructed the young man to drop his pants, 
claiming it was a rite of passage in the industry. What? Talk about a power move gone wrong. Now don't think for a second that this is just a one-off. This is a pattern of alleged behavior that has been building up like a pressure cooker over the years. Diddy's lawyers are out there claiming it's all a publicity stunt, insisting that he's never sexually assaulted anyone. Meanwhile, Busby and his crew are digging in, ready to bring more victims into the spotlight. All right, let's spill some more tea on this unfolding saga because it just keeps getting wilder. So, where we left off, John Doe's legal team was diving deep into the reasons why New York City's Victims of Gender Motivated Violence Protection Act, GMVA, applies to their case against Sean Diddy Combs. Now, the GMVA isn't just some legal jargon. It's a powerful tool meant to protect victims from gender-based violence and abuse. In this case, John Doe's attorneys are arguing that Combs didn't just step over the line. He bulldozed through it with the kind of bravado that only someone like him who's used to getting what he wants, could muster. The act gives the court a way to hold individuals accountable when their actions are driven by gender discrimination or violence, making it a key point in the lawsuit. But hold on, because there's more. John Doe's case is just one among many. Remember Tony Busby, the Texas lawyer, who promised more than 100 lawsuits were on the way? Well, buckle up because as of now, the number of plaintiffs is rising faster than Combs' hits on the Billboard charts. We're talking about an avalanche of claims from individuals across the country, all ready to take the stand and share their experiences. This isn't just a couple of disgruntled fans. We're talking about a full-on choir of voices, some of whom are coming forward after years of silence. Busby's press conferences have turned into must-watch events, where he paints a picture of a man who, for years, thought he was untouchable. The allegations span decades, including wild parties that might as well have been straight out of a reality TV show gone wrong. Each new lawsuit reveals a shocking new layer of misconduct, like peeling back the layers of an onion. Except this onion is drenched in drama and scandal, and let's not forget the diversity of the victims. This isn't just a story about one group or demographic, it's a wide-ranging issue affecting people of all ages, races, and backgrounds. From the nine-year-old who reportedly faced harassment at a party, to the grown men and women who feel empowered to speak up now, the narratives are diverse, yet strikingly similar, in their horrors. It's a powerful reminder that nobody is immune to the kind of manipulation and predatory behavior that Combs allegedly exhibited. As we dive deeper into this story, the legal landscape is shifting. Combs' defense team, while adamantly denying all allegations, is preparing for a legal battle that's shaping up to be as high profile as any music award show. Their argument hinges on discrediting the claims and presenting Combs as a victim of, of a media frenzy, rather than the villain the in a gripping forward. crime drama. A Texas lawyer they say the allegations are an attempt to grab headlines and the fight in court will be a test of not just the evidence, but of public perception. Now, here's where it gets really juicy. Amidst all this chaos, rumors are swirling that more high-profile names could be drawn into the fray. When you're dealing with a web as tangled as this one, it's only a matter of time before more skeletons start falling out of closets. Could we see former associates or partygoers coming out of the woodwork, ready to add their voices to the growing chorus? Only time will tell, but if history has taught us anything, it's that where there's smoke, there's usually a fire. As the saga continues, the ripple effects of these allegations are resonating beyond just Diddy and his inner circle. The music industry, often characterized by its glam and glitz, now finds itself grappling with deeper conversations about accountability and chinde, predatory behavior. Artists, executives, and fans alike are weighing in sparking discussions that could lead to significant changes in how the industry handles its allegations of misconduct. The message is clear. Silence and complicity are no longer acceptable. Diddy's legal team is gearing up for what promises to be a monumental fight. They're meticulously combing through every detail, trying to unearth inconsistencies in the plaintiff's stories. This isn't just about defending one man. It's a battle over narratives, with the future of many careers hanging in the balance. The legal maneuvering will be intense, 
with Diddy likely to argue that these lawsuits are nothing more than an opportunistic attempt to cash in on his fame. But as the plaintiffs come forward, bolstered by the support of organizations advocating for victims' rights, the pressure on the defense is mounting. Behind the scenes, there's a palpable shift in the dynamics of power in the industry. Those who have long been silent are now finding their voices. With each new lawsuit, the stories being shared have the potential to inspire more individuals to step out of the shadows, reclaiming their narratives and demanding justice. There's a growing sense of community among victims, the and the legal broken. actions are becoming a rallying victims cry for forward. those who have felt marginalized or ignored. More than 100 Meanwhile, down the pipe media outlets Sean are Diddy having Collins. a field day, reporting on every development with breathless anticipation. Social media is buzzing with hashtags, opinions, and theories about what might happen next. The public is hungry for updates, eager to dissect every detail. This constant scrutiny adds another layer of pressure to the case, making it harder for Diddy and his team to mount an effective defense. The atmosphere is electric, a perfect storm of public interest, media coverage, and serious allegations that's drawing everyone into the fray. As the court dates approach, eyes are turning toward the possible fallout. Could this be a turning point for the industry? Many hope so. Conversations about consent, power dynamics, and the treatment of women and men in the entertainment world are gaining traction. The movement could lead to a broader push for reforms, like better protection for aspiring artists and stricter accountability measures for industry leaders. The groundwork is being laid for a future where victims feel safe to speak out, knowing their voices will be heard and respected. But what about Diddy? As the clock ticks down to trial, the question looms large. Will he fight to clear his name or will he seek a quiet resolution? If the latter, what kind of settlements could emerge? The music mogul's legacy hangs in the balance, with the potential for both redemption and ruin. His next moves will be scrutinized, and every decision will carry weight, not just for him, but for countless others in the industry who are watching closely. In this era of awakening, the stories coming to light are not just about individual experiences, they're reshaping the narrative around fame and its pitfalls. The Diddy case may become a catalyst for change, sparking a movement that encourages others to confront their own truths and seek justice, no matter the odds. With each lawsuit filed and each victim speaking out, we are witnessing a profound moment in history, one where the power dynamics are shifting and the voices of the voiceless are finally being amplified.